The information in this video is based on the most current information available at the time of production. While affordable safety training works hard to make sure these materials are current, the employer has sole responsibility for compliance with all laws, regulations, and standards. This video is sold with the understanding that AST is not providing professional or legal advice. Employers should have a reliable source for current regulatory information and best practices. Today in Chicago, a construction worker was killed when the aerial device he was operating collapsed. The worker was moving the lift with the boom elevated when the right side wheel struck a curb. This caused the lift to become unstable and topple over. The operator was not wearing the required fall protection and was thrown from the platform. Experts say a proper work area hazard inspection could have identified the stability hazard and prevented the accident. They also note that the fall protection is required for anyone performing work on an aerial device. A memorial service is being held on Friday. Aerial lifts are used frequently in construction and general industry to raise workers to an elevated height. While these tools are very useful, if used improperly, they can be dangerous. It is important that every operator is trained on the specific type of lift that they will be operating. The objectives of this lesson are to know the types of aerial lifts, understand stability characteristics of aerial lifts, know how to obtain important operating instructions, understand the requirements for vehicle and workplace inspections, understand safe operating principles for aerial lifts, understand fall protection requirements for working on aerial lifts. The American National Standards Institute classifies aerial lifts, or mobile elevated work platforms, into two groups. Group A consists of mobile work platforms that move vertically, but stay within the tipping lines of the machine. Scissor lifts are an example of Group A mobile work platforms. Group B consists of aerial lifts where the platform extends past the machine's chassis. A standard boom lift is an example of a Group B mobile elevated work platform. Each group is divided into three types. Type 1 mobile work platforms can only be driven in the stowed position. A vertical tower is an example of a Type 1 elevated work platform. Type 2 work platforms can be driven while elevated, but can only be controlled from the bottom operator panel. A mobile stock picker is an example of a Type 2 device. Type 3 mobile elevated work platforms can be driven while elevated, and are controlled from the work platform. An articulating boom lift is an example of a Type 3 mobile work platform. The operation of aerial lifts in the workplace is covered by OSHA 29 CFR 1926.453, Aerial Lifts, and the American National Standards Institute, Safe Use of Mobile Elevating Work Platforms, 92.22. Mobile Elevated Work Platform Selection The employer must evaluate the job requirements and work site conditions to determine which type of aerial lift will safely accomplish the task. It is important to select the correct vehicle so employees can accomplish their work without having to push the limits of the vehicle. The selection process should consider required elevation. How high does the worker need to reach? How close does the operator need to be to the work? Horizontal outreach. What is the required horizontal outreach? What is the height of the object that needs to be reached over to access the work? Are there any obstacles on the ground that limit the position of the vehicle? Required capacity. How many people need to be lifted? What is required to be on the platform in addition to personnel? What is the maximum expected load of people, tools, and equipment? 
Support and driving conditions. What are the ground conditions on the job site? What terrain will the machine be traveling and elevating on? Will the ground hold the weight of the vehicle? Are there any tunnels or chambers beneath the support surface? What is the slope and condition of the support surface? Hazardous atmospheres. Has a qualified person determined if any atmospheric hazards exist? Are the vehicles rated for this hazard? Have employees been trained on the hazards and provided proper equipment? Indoor work areas. Is buildup of vehicle emissions a concern? Is there enough lighting? Are there any obstacles that need to be maneuvered around? Will the floor support the load? What other work is going on in the area? Access to the work area. How will the vehicle be delivered? What is the access point? Are there any obstacles, such as stairs or ramps, that need to be maneuvered around? Are there pedestrian or vehicle traffic hazards? Will the vehicle be moved while in an elevated position? The employer will consider the hazards and circumstances of the work area and select the mobile elevated work platform best suited for these conditions. Aerial lifts may only be operated by trained and authorized employees. To become authorized, you must be trained by a qualified person on the safety requirements of aerial lift operation. This includes operations and safety, applicable regulations, contents of the operator's manual, and practical training. Once training is complete, the employer will conduct an operational evaluation. Operator retraining is required when a supervisor determines an operator requires refresher training, when the operator is involved in an accident, or near miss, or is required by the employer. Specific training requirements for aerial devices are listed in 29 CFR 1926.453 and ANSI 92.24. The most important safety device on an aerial lift is the operator's manual. This is where all the information that is important for safe operation is provided. In this manual you will find operating rules, vehicle capacities and limitations, operation of safety devices, inspection requirements, training requirements, and much more. Every operator must be familiar with the contents of the operator's manual for the vehicle they are operating. When not in use, the operator's manual must be kept on the vehicle. Placards and decals are placed on the vehicle to communicate important information to operators. Electrical hazards, pinch points, other hazards, and emergency controls will be clearly marked. Each aerial lift has a maximum lift capacity. This can be found in the operator's manual and on the data plate. The lift capacity can vary depending on the position of the boom. An extensible boom lift with the boom fully extended and lowered may have a lower capacity than one that is straight up and down. Most lifts have one maximum capacity listed. If you keep the load on the platform lower than this maximum load, you will stay within the capacity limit in all boom positions. It is critically important that you know the maximum lift capacity of the aerial device. Your life depends on it. When operating within capacity limits, an aerial lift is designed to be stable in all boom positions. An aerial device can become unstable if the rated load for a given position is exceeded. The load on the platform is not balanced. There are more occupants than permitted by the manual. Workers enter or exit the platform while elevated. The vehicle is on a slope that is too steep. The vehicle is not on a strong surface. The vehicle is struck by something. There are high winds, or the lift is moved while loaded. It is important to understand the stability characteristics and limitations of the vehicle you are operating. The operator's manual will have more guidance for keeping the vehicle stable. Aerial lift modifications must be approved, in writing, by the manufacturer. 
if modifications are made, the capacity, operation, and maintenance instructional markings must be changed accordingly. A risk assessment must be performed whenever aerial lifts are used in the workplace. The risk assessment must include an identification of the task, which includes the location and timing, the evaluation and selection of the proper mobile elevated work platform for the work conditions. This analysis should include the task to be completed, constraints of the work area, ground conditions, site access, and proximity to other workers and the public. An assessment of the risks associated with the use of aerial lifts. The risk factors include, the work location, the type of work platform, the people employed, and the materials and equipment to be carried. A designation of appropriate control measures. These should protect employees from the identified risks. Procedures, special precautions, and protective equipment must be implemented as necessary. An identification of safe work practices. The risk assessment results must be used to identify safe work procedures and plans for contingencies. A rescue plan must be developed to address an equipment failure and a fall from the platform. Rescue options include self-rescue, assisted rescue by others in the work area, and rescue by emergency services. This risk assessment must be communicated to all entities involved in the work. The risk assessment should be completed before work commences and evaluated periodically during long-term jobs.
an aerial device must be inspected by a trained operator each day before the lift is used. Conduct a walk around visual inspection to look for damaged components, cracks or corrosion, excessive wear, and any loose, deformed or missing bolts, pins, fasteners, locking devices or covers. Inspect the work platform, including the guardrail systems, floor, anchorage, and mounting. Check for basic cleanliness and any signs of damage. Check all controls and associated mechanisms for proper operation. This includes proper operation of interlocks and the controls return to neutral when released and are not sticking. Make sure control functions and operations are clearly marked. Check that the visual and audible safety devices are operating in accordance with the manual. Visually inspect fiberglass and insulating components for visible damage and contamination. Make sure that all the operational and instructional markings are present and readable. Check for validation that the vehicle annual inspection is current. Check hydraulic and pneumatic systems for observable deterioration and excessive leakage. Check the fluid systems levels. Pneumatic and hydraulic control systems operate under pressure. Leaks in these systems can cause injury to employees, expose them to hazardous chemicals, and create a slippery and unsafe work area. Check the electrical systems for damage, signs of excessive deterioration, dirt, and moisture accumulation. Check the tires for proper inflation, if required. Inspect the wheels and wheel fasteners. Perform an operational test. Set up the aerial device for operation, including the stabilizers. Cycle each aerial device boom function through its complete range of motion. Check the functionality of emergency controls. Check the brake for proper operation and performance. The owner's manual will have additional inspection items that are specific to the vehicle. Be sure to include these items on the inspection. If the aerial device does not pass inspection, remove it from service and notify a supervisor. All unsafe items must be replaced or repaired before the device is placed back in service. It is important to inspect the work area before using an aerial device. Most accidents that occur are a result of a hazard that could have been identified if the area had been thoroughly inspected. Make sure the ground is strong enough to support the vehicle. Soft dirt or other surfaces may not be able to support the weight and may cause the vehicle to tip. Walk the work area and make sure there are no ditches, excavations, holes, or similar hazards. Check for excessive slopes or drop-offs that may cause the vehicle to become unstable. Check the area for loose debris, materials, or equipment. Verify that there is enough space between the aerial device and obstructions around it. Be especially careful to check for electrical hazards, such as overhead power lines. Current and forecasted weather conditions must be appropriate for the work being done. Make sure that there are no unauthorized persons in the work area. The work area must be clear of road, worksite, and pedestrian traffic. Make sure that there are no underground chambers beneath the work area. Tunnels, underground utilities, and sewers may cause the ground above to collapse under a heavy load. The work area must be free from other hazards, such as dangerous atmospheres or falling objects. Hazardous locations with flammable or explosive atmospheres require specially rated aerial lifts. In addition, employees need work procedures, personal protective equipment, and training. Do not enter hazardous locations unless you have been trained and authorized by the employer. Inspecting the work area is the responsibility of every operator. This can save not only your life, but the lives of your coworkers. Don't assume everything is safe, take a walk around and verify it yourself.
The controls on an aerial device will vary from vehicle to vehicle, but there are some common principles. Each aerial lift will have ground controls, and many have platform controls. Aerial lifts require two distinct, and separate, actions to operate the vehicle. This is to prevent accidental motion. The ground controls require a function switch to be held to one side, while the other controls are activated. The platform controls usually have a foot pedal, which must be pressed while operating the controls. If the function switch, or the foot pedal, is released, the vehicle will stop. To use the platform controls, rotate the control switch to platform, press the foot pedal to activate the controls, and move the appropriate switch for the desired vehicle motion. The platform will shake a little when moving. The platform also has a joystick, for driving the vehicle. The thumb controls on top are for turning the steering wheels. Press the stick forward to go forward, and pull the stick back for reverse. Most vehicles will require the platform arm to be aligned with the steering wheels in front, before it will allow the vehicle to drive. The creep wheel controls how fast the aerial lift mechanisms move. The lower the number, the slower the movement. Lower the creep setting when you approach a building, or obstacle, to prevent accidental contact. The crush bar is an emergency device that stops the vehicle when it senses pressure. This is designed to prevent an operator from getting crushed between the platform and a building. It can be triggered by simply leaning against it. Press the reset button to restart the vehicle. Pressing the emergency stop will stop the vehicle. There is an e-stop on both control boards. If for any reason you feel unsafe, just press the e-stop, and notify a supervisor. If you find the vehicle controls unresponsive, check the e-stop on the platform, and ground controller. It is likely one of them have been pressed. Electrocution is a common cause of aerial lift operator fatalities. Operators must take care to identify, and avoid, sources of electricity. Operators must maintain a distance of at least 10 feet from any live source of electricity up to 50,000 volts. For every additional 10,000 volts, add an extra 4 inches of minimum clearance. The aerial device will be clearly marked with minimum safe clearance distances. Qualified electrical workers may perform specialized work. Their minimum clearance distances may be lower. Qualified electrical workers must select appropriately rated aerial devices, and comply with additional regulations, and requirements, for their trade. Types of aerial lift users Occupants work on aerial lift platforms, but do not operate the vehicle. Occupants must be trained how to work safely on the platform, and how to operate the vehicle in an emergency. An operator is a person who is qualified to control the movement of a mobile elevated work platform. Operators must be trained on inspection, application, use, maintenance, and operation of the aerial lift. A supervisor monitors operator performance and supervises the work. Supervisors must be trained on work platform selection, rules and regulations, hazards and protection methods, and the importance of having the operator's manual on the vehicle. Before operating an aerial device, make sure the weather conditions are appropriate. Know the wind speed limitations of the vehicle. Check the weather forecast periodically, throughout the day. Verify that the weight of the load is within the capacity of the vehicle. Do not forget to add the weight of tools, and equipment.
the operator must inform platform occupants of applicable regulations, standards, and safety rules. The ground slope must be within the range recommended by the manufacturer. Install wheel chocks, if required, by the conditions, or the operator's manual. Workers on Group B aerial devices must be connected with a fall protection system. Each worker must be connected to their own designated anchor point. Always wear a hard hat, and check with a supervisor, to see if any additional PPE is required. Check the overhead workspace, to make sure that it is clear of obstructions, or electrical conductors. Maintain a safe distance from any obstructions, or electrical equipment. Try to keep the load evenly spaced on the platform. Engage the outriggers, and stabilizers, as required by the owner's manual. Use outrigger pads, when necessary, to provide firm footing. Make sure the guardrails are installed properly, and the gates are closed. If the platform gets caught, or snagged, stop operation, clear all workers from the platform, before attempts are made to get it free. Use the bottom controls to clear the device of the obstruction. Before operating, make sure that all pedestrians are clear of the vehicle. Mark the area, to prevent unauthorized traffic. Fences, barricades or flaggers may be required. Do not enter, or exit, a raised platform unless it is specifically allowed by applicable regulations. Connect fall protection to a designated anchor point. Never tie off to an adjacent pole, or structure. Maintain firm footing on the platform floor. Do not use buckets, or ladders, to raise the working height. Never stand, or sit, on the guardrails. Tools and materials should be secured to the platform. Take extra precautions to prevent objects from falling. Use storage containers, and tool lanyards, as needed. Do not use the aerial device for horizontal loads, unless it is designed for that purpose. Never use an aerial lift as a crane. Do not alter, or override, safety devices. Avoid moving an aerial device with workers on an elevated platform. Lowering the lift, moving it to a new location and raising it again, is the safest way to transit. Aerial lifts that are designed for mobile operation may be moved with workers aloft, if special precautions are taken. Before mobile operation, inform workers in the area that the device will be moving. During mobile operation, never drive on surfaces that could cause the vehicle to become unstable. Maintain a safe distance from obstacles and power lines. Maintain communications between the driver and the operator. Limit the device to an appropriate speed for the conditions. Check the owner's manual for any additional rules or requirements for mobile operation. When work is complete, shut down the lift in accordance with the requirements of the operator's manual. Move the boom into the cradled, shut-down position. Make sure the parking brake is set. Secure the vehicle from unauthorized use by removing and storing the key. If the aerial device is being transported or driven onto the highway, inspect the boom to see it is properly cradled. Make sure the outriggers are stored. Use the locking device to secure the boom in the transport position. Employers must have a rescue plan that covers equipment failure and a fall from the platform. This plan must return a fallen or stranded worker to the ground safely and quickly. For equipment failure, there are two major options. The operator can switch to the backup control system and lower the platform to the ground. If the backup controls do not work, the secondary manual emergency descent controls can be utilized to release the hydraulic pressure and lower the platform. Fall protection is required on all Group B work platforms. The employer must have a plan, in writing, that explains the methods for rescuing a person who has fallen from the platform. There are three main options for rescue. Self-rescue utilizes special equipment that allows the employee to rescue themselves.
Assisted rescue relies on other employees in the work area for rescue. This may involve using the bottom controls to lower the platform, or using another elevated work platform to reach the fallen worker. If another vehicle is used for rescue, a qualified supervisor must conduct a site review, and develop a specific plan for use of the vehicle for rescue. Technical rescue involves using emergency services to perform rescue. Employers who rely on emergency services must verify they have the knowledge, and equipment, to perform the rescue. Emergency services must also be available, and able to arrive in an appropriate amount of time. If the platform becomes entangled, the employees must be removed from the platform, before any attempts are made to free the vehicle. Vehicles that have tipped must be stabilized, and secured, before rescue is attempted. Aerial lift operators must be trained, and authorized, by the employer. Know the weight capacity, maximum slope, and maximum wind speed, for the aerial lift you are operating. Complete an equipment inspection, each day, before use. Survey the work area for hazards, before each use. Connect to an approved fall protection anchor point. Maintain a distance of at least 10 feet from electrical conductors. If the vehicle malfunctions, stop work and notify a supervisor. Keep both feet on the platform at all times. Know, and follow, the requirements of the owner's manual. When used correctly, aerial devices are a safe and effective tool. Make sure that you are familiar with the vehicle, and understand the procedures for dealing with hazards. It's your life, protect it. If for any reason you are concerned for your safety, stop work, and notify your supervisor.